It's the most wonderful time of the year. The Christmas items have hit the shelves at Dollar Tree. And so today I'm going to show you how to take some of those items, use your cutting machine and create some amazing DIY decor and gifts. I've got a ton of free cut files for you. And as always, we're doing it on a budget. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge thank you to my craft buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. We are just getting started on the Christmas crafts for this year, you guys, and we're having so much fun. So if you want to join us, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any future videos. Up first, we are grabbing some of these wood arrows that I absolutely love. And this year I went with some of these shorter ones as well to better fit on my tiered trays. So the long one, you don't have to worry about any prep. You can literally just paint it or stain it, but these, they have have holes in them and I'm not planning on hanging them so I just took a little bit of wood filler which is fully drying out I need to get myself a new container but it worked just fine I'm gonna fill it let it dry sand it down and then you can go ahead and paint it and it's one full piece instead of having the holes Throughout this video, you are going to see me use my Cricut Maker 3, but really any Cricut can be used. Some of the larger ones will be difficult on a Joy, but these arrows are perfect for a Joy machine. I personally like the 12 inch with machines myself because you can just make so much more with them, but you can get by with a Cricut Joy. Let me show you how to get those files. You're going to upload the files you can get from my blog by scanning the QR code here on the screen or heading to the link in the description. Then you are going to upload and you can either drag or drop or browse. And I want to make this elf one. I'm going to add it to my canvas. And then all you have to do up here is I'm going to give you the width sizes. So up here for that particular one, it's seven inches wide. So you literally click lock because you don't want to mess up the aspect ratio. Seven, bada bang, bada boom. There it is. Once you cut out your files to the sizes, here's the large and the small, like I told you. We're gonna weed them out and I am using Oracle matte white vinyl. All of my supplies will be linked down below, including this paper transfer tape, which is a game changer when applying vinyl to a painted surface. I've talked about it all the time. If you're not new here, you're not new to it, but if you are, definitely something to check out. I get mine on Amazon. Then you're just gonna apply your decal. It peels off so easily and these are good to go for tiered trays. Now this is a Santa Claus inspired one with Judy's Hot Cocoa and I had an issue with this small text at the bottom so what I did is I weeded as much as I could then I applied the transfer tape, burnished it down, and then I took it off the backing. I'm now able to weed it like I would heat transfer vinyl and all those little bits are staying right on there making it easy to apply. How fun are these arrows? I love them so much. I am a huge pop culture fan when it comes to any kind of decor to incorporate it and have some fun whimsy in there. I also have Home Alone and another Christmas Vacation one from last year. So if you're interested, I will link that video for you up above. During a recent trip to Dollar Tree, I saw these three different size squares in the crafter square section, and I grabbed some for sign blanks, but then as I was staining, an idea came to me for a nativity set. I ended up doing two of the medium sized boxes and then one large box. For the large box, I cut that file to five and a quarter inches wide, and then the two small ones were four and a half inches wide. Again, this is the white matte vinyl Oracle 651, which just means it's permanent, and I'm applying it with that paper transfer tape. I did the Holy Family in the center, and this is a beautiful way to display a nativity and the reason for the season. Up next, we're headed to the electronics aisle, and usually I don't buy electronics at Dollar Tree, but these night lights are a winner. You could also do the same project with these flat ones, but I decided to pick up one that glowed red. I think they have like clear blue and red, and I thought this would be perfect for Finn's bathroom at night, and I wanted to add a cute little Rudolph decal. So step one was to measure, and I decided I wanted to do about two and a half inches wide to give myself a little buffer around the outside and I used this file that I created to cut out Rudolph in that size. This is a perfect project to use up those scraps that you have lying around. I just put mine in a file folder file and then I can pull them out by color and use them. It's a great way to use those pieces where it's not big enough for a large project, but it will definitely work for these little pieces you need to cut out. I like to use parchment paper to help me layer things like this just so then that way it doesn't stick down before it's ready. So I put the parchment paper down, kind of get it where I want, and you need to have your transfer tape hang off just a little bit so then that way it will hold while you remove the parchment paper or wax paper or whatever. 
Then I just kind of took it layer by layer. I did everything but the white eye, then I added it to the nightlight, and then I added the white just easily by hand. I didn't need parchment paper for that. How cute is this? It is so fun in our bathroom to light the way with red, and it's just so fun and festive. Plus, you can use the cut file for whatever you want. You can make an ornament or a ton of other things. That's the great thing about the free files. You can use them on whatever you want. The Dollar Tree Plus section in my stores have been awesome to check out all the new crafting stuff because I just recently got Plus. So I grabbed this plaque because I thought this would be amazing for a hot cocoa sign. So let's get started. This makeover is so easy, but it turned out so incredibly cute. I started with some red paint and I painted the entire thing front, back, and all the sides making sure to get it coated. Then while it dried, I cut out a hot cocoa file and I designed this specifically to fit this blank from Dollar Tree so the curve would go along the top of the sign. So again, we're cutting it out in the same vinyl. I used pretty much the same roll for this entire video. And the reason I do that is because it's a lot easier to buy a 50 cent container of paint to paint your sign red, for example, versus having to have all these different color vinyl on hand. Using different color vinyl is fun, but nine times out of 10, I have black and white vinyl. So I use paint to add the color to my project. And then I stick with what I have on hand all the time. Another tip here is to trim off any of the excess to help you get it centered on your sign. We're going to make sure it is pushed down all the way. And then I am carefully at an angle, pulling back that paper transfer tape. Now there's no way if you display this, this holiday season that somebody's going to say that came from Dollar Tree. I was super excited to find these $1.25 pillow case covers because the back is blank. So you could easily customize the back and have it be a double sided pillow or just lean it up. Nobody's going to see the back. I measured and realized that I wanted a decal that was 12 inches wide and with heat transfer vinyl, there's a shiny side and a dull side. You want to make sure you put the shiny side down on your mat. Then you're gonna load it into your machine. And the other thing you wanna make sure that you click is the mirror setting. So this is what it looks like in Cricut, but make sure you do it on yours. That's just gonna flip your design to work with the heat transfer vinyl. Up next, we're gonna weed everything out. I like to take the inner pieces out first, and that will help your hand from sticking to the carrier sheet while you're weeding. Also for these cutout characters, I did the outside first and then worked my way in just so I didn't remove a piece of the face just because it was a little bit more intricate. And then it was time to press it. So I gave it a quick pre-press on the back and you wanna make sure you put down parchment paper or wax paper. I'll show you why in just a second. And then we are going to add the decals with that shiny side up. This is why you mirror because you flip it over. I'm gonna press at 320 degrees for about 15 to 18 seconds, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure to check the packaging of your heat transfer vinyl. Also, this is why we wanna cover it because the back is sublimation and it may transfer onto your press pad. So don't make the same mistake I did. Now mine is cool peel, so I let my heat transfer vinyl cool. And then I peeled off the carrier sheet, leaving this awesome pillow. My last step was to stuff it with some stuffing and decorate. I love this thing. It is so fun. And this is another one. You wouldn't guess it was a dollar 25. Add some vinyl and it's Christmas magic. Now that we're officially in the holiday season, I've broken out all of my festive apparel from storage. And before I wore it, I wanted to make sure it wasn't musty smelling or anything. So I grabbed my Earth Breeze Eco Sheets to get them fresh and clean and ready to wear. These Eco Sheets are laundry detergent, but they're liquidless detergent. They can work in any machine, any temperature, hot or cold, even high efficiency machines. With my son Finn, I was worried about switching detergents and irritating his sensitive skin, but these are dermatologist tested. They're also hypoallergenic allergenic and we went with the fragrance free option but they also have a fragrance option i was also really drawn to the company's focus on sustainability even the packaging is biodegradable it may look like plastic but it's cardboard easy to rip as a family we're always looking to make choices to reduce our impact on the environment and switching to earth breeze aligned with that you can get these eco sheets delivered right to your door via a flexible subscription plus they have a 100 money back guarantee so if you buy it and you don't like it you'll get your money back no questions asked visit earthbreeze.com slash wit to get started with 40 percent off that's earthbreeze.com slash wit for 40 percent off your subscription all that info is down in the description and now let's get back into the diys now for my fall version of this video i used this chalkboard for a big old sign it was only five bucks and you guys loved it so i'm bringing it back for a christmas version 
Step one to elevate this chalkboard is we're gonna stain the outside unfinished wood with Early American. I wrapped my cloth around my finger like this so I could really get into the nooks and crannies. Now my chalkboard got scratched even though there was an outer protective layer, so I decided to tape off the edges after I stained them and give it a quick coat of black chalk paint. It's going to make it look like a chalkboard again and remove some of those scratches, so keep that in mind when you're picking them up at Dollar Tree. Then I let it dry, remove the painter's tape, then it was time to cut out my design and here's what you need to do to get this big design to cut in two parts so you can fit it on your machine mat. So the SVG when it's uploaded is going to be approximately the size that we're going for for the sign, which is 19 inches wide. So I'm just going to tweak this and 19 by 13 won't fit onto a mat. So what I'm going to do is I am going to ungroup. So that will give you all of your individual pieces in the SVG file, which stands for scalable vector graphic. It just makes it easier to change the size. And then we are going to drag and select. There's no place like home and attach. And then we're going to do for the holidays and the snowflake and attach. So then what it's going to do for you when you click make it is you can select on a mat. And then it's going to put it on these two different mats for you. And then you can piece it together when you apply it to the sign. So let's get it cut and assemble. When I was done, I had two sheets of vinyl with the top and bottom of my design. I trimmed off any excess vinyl so I could put that in my scrap pile. And then I weeded everything out. Before attaching the transfer tape, I trimmed off any extra backer sheet just so I could make sure it was lined up correctly. And then when I had it where I wanted, I went right over the top with paper transfer tape. Then now you just have a big design just like we did with any of the smaller projects. But here I like to use the hinge method to make sure that everything stays where I want it. All you have to do is get a piece of masking tape or painter's tape, put it right in the center of your decal, and then get it put onto the sign with the backer still on where you want it. Then you can peel up one half of it, peel off the backer, trim it, and then apply it onto your sign. The reason I love this method is that way you don't have to worry about getting this big decal down in one swoop. You can get it where you want it, take your time, and then apply it easily. Then just remove your transfer tape and this sign is good to go. I love it on its own, but I thought it would be fun to have a companion sign. And guess what? I was able to make it with Dollar Tree items as well. I grabbed this canvas for $3 from the plus section and I used the same color stain early American that I did on the outside of my chalkboard. That's going to make it look like a matching set and make it look a lot more high end. Once that's dry, we're going to tape and paint the inside just like we did the chalkboard. So again, they kind of match like a set. And then I am going to remove the tape, measure, realize I need a 10 inch wide decal, which is going to be a snowflake that matches the overall motif of the home for the holiday sign. I'm going to cut it out, weed it, and apply it with paper transfer tape just like I did the other sign. Then all there's left to do is decorate. You can do each sign on their own or put them together. I really like how the indent of holidays fits when you line them up just like this. I paired it with my Hobby Lobby garland and some new lights I was influenced to buy by Shannon over at the Daily DIYer from Amazon. I love them and I will link them down below. They twinkle. They have a bunch of different settings. So magical. Makes me feel like Christmas. My son Finn is big into plushies right now, so I grabbed one of these so that I could customize it with some heat transfer vinyl for a movie night we have coming up. All I had to do was cut out his name on some heat transfer vinyl. I did two and a half inches wide in a font that I liked from Design Space, and then I was able to apply it with my little Cricut mini press, but you could also use an iron, and this turned out so stinking cute. It's going to be so fun for an elf movie night. Speaking of Elf, one of my favorite scenes from that movie is the snowball fight scene. So I decided to take this huge red bowl from the kitchen section and turn it into an indoor snowball fight kit, especially when it gets so cold here in Illinois. I need to have some activities for Finn to do. So this son of a nutcracker, time for a snowball fight, is actually a recreation. I made my own version. I made something similar a few years ago, but it wasn't my own file. It was before I gave away so many free files. So I decided to make one for my collection. It's got the different layers for the different colors, and I just cut it out in green, yellow, and red. This is perfect for scraps, and I didn't worry about layering with transfer tape because they were super easy to stack on top of each other. I'm applying just regular transfer tape here because I don't have to worry about anything peeling up from the bowl. I am getting it at a good angle and then just applying it, starting with pressure in the center and pushing to either side. Then my last step was to fill it up with some of these fun snowballs from Dollar Tree and we can go hog wild with some snowball fights indoors to stay warm this winter.
One of my favorite things to do year round, but especially at Christmas with Dollar Tree items is customized gift wrap. So things like ribbon, bags that you can find for super cheap in the regular wrap section. We're gonna customize all of these. And of course I've got free cut files so you can do the same. I promise you this is so much easier than you probably think it is. All you're gonna do is cut out a decal to the size you want for the bag. And then if you have paper transfer tape, you can easily apply it with that and not wreck the bag. And I was able to crank out a ton of these using the same piece of paper transfer tape. That's one of my biggest questions on that. Can you reuse it? Yes, probably up to five times, depending on what you're sticking it to. Now, if you don't have paper transfer tape or you're in a bind, you can use painter's tape. I just took some pieces, covered up the bulk of my design. I carefully peeled off the backer sheet added it to my bag, made sure everything was pushed down, and then removed the painter's tape just like I did the paper transfer tape. Regardless of the method that you use, these are so quick and easy. They're nice to have on hand. You can whip them up in under five minutes. And I am always looking for Christmas vacation bags, and I never found ones that I liked a lot, so I made my own. Another gift wrapping staple that you can grab at Dollar Tree and make over but use for so many things beyond the wrapping is the ribbon. I love the three inch ribbon, but you can also use smaller ones as well. I just take some heat transfer vinyl and cut out a variety of sayings. And I like to cut them about two and a half inches tall to fit on the three inch ribbon. And you can apply it on a low heat setting. And I just like to add some Teflon over the top. This is a sheet you can get on Amazon. And I like it because it allows the heat to go through, but it definitely protects your ribbon. Now you could easily put this on a present. I do that a lot for wedding showers, baby showers, and also Christmas gifts. But something else I like to do is take the ribbon and put it into my tree or into garlands, and it really helps spice up the look. I think I might do something like this coming up for a Christmas vacation tree for next week's video. I will keep you posted on how that turns out, but putting movie quotes and things like that, so fun and a great way to customize things. Another find I was so excited about in the plus section was this wood tray. They have a few different ways that they're cut. So some have scallops, but I just went for the traditional size and I stained two of them in early American just to keep it cohesive for the whole video. Now I decided before I applied my vinyl decal to put a coat of Mod Podge down and let it dry. That is going to allow the decal to grip. Sometimes with just stain, it won't stick and nothing's worse than weeding something this intricate and having it not stick. So when in doubt, add the Mod Podge. I did a 13 inch wide decal variation of the arrows that we did at the beginning of the video to create this sign tray. I'm gonna use it as a sign. Then I decided to just seal it real quick with this Maker's Magic stuff from the Scorch Marker brand. It's supposed to cure a lot quicker and better than Mod Podge, so I wanted to give it a try. And so far, I like it. So I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. Now for my second version, I taped off the edges of my stain tray and did a black base coat. You could easily do this with red or other colors as well, but I wanted a more kind of modern black and dark wood look to go with a room in my house. And this Frosty's decal, again, was 13 inches wide. I had this and I made a sign before a couple years ago in an Ikea hacks video. And in our move, the tray got like scratch so bad, like someone dropped it or something. And so I wanted to make another variation because I got rid of the other one and this one turned out so good. This one also got sealed with that Maker's Magic and it has a little bit of a scent to it and it's actually thinner than a Mod Podge, but I like it. They only have a gloss version, which if they are hearing me, hopefully they'll do a matte version soon. But honestly, it sealed it down really nice. It dried really fast and I like the look even though it's gloss, so great. And it also goes well with that snowflake sign we made earlier. I love a good porch sign for any season, but it can get expensive with wood and all the things. So when I saw this home sweet home sign with no glitter on it, I grabbed it and ran out of the store as fast as I could because I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I brought it home and I painted the entire thing red and the inside needed three coats to cover up the home sweet home. I probably could have mixed it with a little bit of white or kind of primed it with spray paint. I would recommend that in the future. Nonetheless, the three coats covered it and then I was ready to create my decal that I had to cut in different sections like we've done before. I want my file to be approximately 43, give or take, inches tall. So then here is my file and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And we know this is the size that we want. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit ungroup up here. So I have a bunch of different pieces. 
And then I'm going to be able to figure out, okay, with this is the right size, is have a holly jolly going to fit? No, because it's 27 inches and I can only cut up to 23 inches. Okay, no worries. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this, ungroup, and we're going to cut this in two parts. So this is 17.5. So yes, that will fit. So we're gonna go ahead and hit attach. That's gonna tell Cricut to cut it all together. So then we're gonna to have to do the same thing over here. So we're gonna ungroup these letters and figure out, okay, C-H-R-I-S-T is 28, C-H-R-I-S is 23. So that's going to fit on my longer mat. If not, you wanna keep it under 11 and a half inches if you only have a square mat. Hit attach. And then once we select these, that's gonna be 18 inches. So that's gonna work. So now when we go to make it, I'm going to do it on a mat and it's going to put everything on the mat for you. So then you can cut it. If you're worried about things being a little too close for comfort, you can always click and drag it to get the size that you want. Then you know the drill. We're going to cut it out on some white vinyl. You could customize the colors any way you want for this, but I did the two sections for Christmas and the two sections for Have a Holly Jolly. I added my paper transfer tape to everything, and then it was just like a puzzle. I had my mock-up image up so I knew where everything should go, and I just had to approximate the space between the S and the T, but I laid everything out, and it fit right where I needed it to go. Quick and easy to apply, add the holly jolly, and this thing is good to go. Now, I don't know about you, but this looks like it cost me a lot more than five bucks and some vinyl. I am so happy with how this turned out, and I think this is going to find a new home at my mom's house. She's hosting Christmas this year, and she needs some decor, and I am happy to oblige. I think this turned out so cute, and the red is so fun and festive. I always do a happy dance in the aisle when I find some cute Christmas placemats at Dollar Tree that don't have glitter or anything on it. So we're going to do a dupe, a mixture of this Pottery Barn pillow as well as this Pottery Barn mat. I designed an entire file for you per the theme of this video, so you can go ahead and download it and cut it to 13 inches wide on iron-on vinyl. There's a couple pieces like red, green, and yellow that you cut out just little small pieces. Again, this is great for scrap, and we're going to weed all of those and get ready to press it. Now, this process is very similar to the Home Alone pillow before. You're just adding a couple colors, and let me show you it's not as scary as you might think. We're going to start with our big piece, and what I'm going to do is fold this in half and put a crease not on the vinyl but on the carrier sheet in the center. I'm going to fold my placemat over and create a quick little press line. Then you just line up the two lines, super easy to get it in the center, and then cold peel, peeling this off, and then it's time to add my pieces. So I started with my two legs off of the end and I pressed it with my little mini press, but you could also use an iron. While that's cooling, I'm going to add my hat to the top of the C. Then I'm going to go back to the feet, add the shoes, go back up, add the stripe to the hat. And my last step with a Teflon sheet to protect the rest of the vinyl is to add the little red feather from Buddy's hat. Now to turn this into a pillow, we are going to just take a little, little snip out of the back. Make sure you don't cut through. You want to peel apart the two pieces of the placemat and create just a little slot. Stuff that with some polyfill or whatever you have on hand that you normally stuff pillows with. And then I just took my dowel needle that I usually use to string up some garlands and stitched this bad boy up. I just went from the top to the bottom, looped it around all the way down, tied it off, and bada bing, bada boom, we're good to go. I am obsessed. I love that I added the hat and the feet because the original pillow didn't have that. And when I went to look today to get you a comparable photo for the dupe, it's not on the website anymore, so I think it's sold out. So whether you didn't want to pay 70 bucks for the original pillow or it's sold out and you couldn't get there quick enough, here's how you can make your own for a fraction, I mean fraction, of the cost. And you craft buddies didn't think I'd let you get away without giving you another option for these wood rounds. We are going to stain two of them in early American and I've got two different options for you. I think my Swifties will love the first one. I'm going to measure one and find the center horizontally and then I'm also going to find the center vertically. Now on the one that I found the center horizontally, I'm going to paint that red. Make sure you get your edges and go ahead and peel off that painter's tape right as it's wet. It's no big deal and then that way it's not going to seal down. For my second one, I measured so that I could do a left and right painting instead of topped and bottom. I did the same thing, added the painter's tape, painted it green, and then got to work on the files. So what we're gonna wanna do is head over to Shapes and get this all sized and ready for the sign. So I'm going to select this half circle 
image here and I'm going to make the height 11.75 because that is going to be the size of our sign. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out basically the part of this SVG that we want to show. So we're going to select all of it and I am going to go to weld over here because the only way you're going to be able to do this technique I'm going to show you is if it's all one piece. So weld it together, figure out approximately what size you want and you can change the color so it's easier to see. And you're also going to want to make sure it's in the front so you can see it over this. So then we're going to take it resize it figure out kind of what you want in there how much tree how much leopard get it where you want it and then we're going to select both of these things and we're going to hit slice down here in the right hand corner it's going to create a bunch of different whole blue things but what you're going to do is pull out that leopard print you can pull out these different images and we're going to go ahead and just go with this white one and you can get rid of these other two one other quick tip is if you're working with an SVG and say you have it sized and you go to click make, you may get frustrated when it looks like this. It doesn't spell out what you're looking for. That is because it's not attached on your canvas over here. So just select the entire thing or what colors you want to go together. So if I wanted tree farm down here to be green, I would attach that separately. But because I want it all one color, I'm going to hit attach. And once you hit attach and hit make, then it's going to be the exact way that you want it. That is what happens with SVGs because you can mess with them, move them around. And if you're confused because your item is grouped but not attached, group only matters when you're designing. So it's not going to have any bearing on when you cut it. It's only for designing to make it easier. So this attach down here is where you're going to want to make sure that it is turned on. So then that way you don't have a big mumbo jumbo hullabaloo of all of your stuff. So the green one is going to be my Swifty inspired one. So I weeded in my heart as a Christmas tree farm, as well as the leopard print. We're going to apply the leopard print to the left hand side with paper transfer tape. And if you have any pieces that don't line up perfectly on the line, this vinyl is very forgiving. You can go ahead and pick it up real quick before it sets, get it right on the line, and it's going to give you a custom look. Then we're going to add the wording to the other side, re-add the hanger that I removed to stain, and this one is ready to go. Super quick and easy, and because I'm putting this inside my house, I'm not worried about sealing it, but we will seal the next one because it's going on my front door. For the red one, I wanted to make a sign that said, in a world full of Grinches, be a Griswold. So I made one of the look that I liked. I wanted to add the moose mug as well as an actual image of the Grinch. So I did a red and white vinyl mixture so it would pop off of the red. I just did a manual layering here, but you could layer it like we did the Rudolph one earlier in the video with the parchment paper. If you need that additional help, no worries. Use it if you need it. Then once that's applied, we're going to use that maker's magic that I talked about before, that waterproof sealer, just so then that way, if I get a lot of heat on my front door, it's not going to peel the vinyl, and it's just also going to help that paint not scratch, especially if you store things in tubs season to season. Give it a quick coat, hang it up on your door, and you are festive, and no Grinches here. We're being a Griswold. We're going to have the hap hap happiest Christmas because our doors are decked out, and the other great thing is just put it on a wreath, then you don't have to worry about doing anything crazy additional with the wreath. It adds so much bang for your buck. That's gonna do it for this round of Dollar Tree Cricut Blanks. As always, you've gotta go down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. You can also scan this QR code right on the screen to head over to my blog to get all of those free files. Just scroll all the way down and make sure you see the box that says Whiskey Downloads. I will never ask you for your credit card information to download my free files. So just FYI, there are scammers afoot. It's that time of year, so just make sure I will never ask you for that information. Also, a huge thank you to Earth Breeze for sponsoring this video. If you would like to try out their Eco Sheets, be sure to head down to the description for more information, or you can head right to earthbreeze.com slash wit for 40% off to get started. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video because I've got a ton more Christmas ideas coming. I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.